Hello everybody and welcome back to Oakfield Farm. So I have actually just gone and bought the new field as you should be able to tell by looking at our bank account balance it has reduced dramatically. Um, it was £380,000 or something so quite expensive and I've actually already recorded the first section of this video but I've decided to start again since I actually took a look to see how many minutes I'd been recording for and I had already done six minutes of me just basically saying now which field shall we buy? Me um and erring over the field. So luckily you've missed out on six minutes of boredom. Anyway, after me clicking on all the different fields to see which one was the best one, I went for field number 38 just here which cost £383,400. It is a crop of corn which is currently growing in there so that is going to be hopefully quite a good thing to be doing. We're going to harvest it with the combine harvester, I know that you would probably do it with the forager. Uh, in the UK but I've just decided that using the combine harvester just this once is going to be the best way uh, to make quite a bit of money. Anyway the low loader is just over there, I've also parked that out of the way and I've also spent the past 10 minutes before uh, recording putting the combine harvester away over here and it is the last time I'm going to put it in this shed. It might look like it's fitting in there very nicely but it took me a long time, well like I said 10 minutes just to put the header in there and the combine. So I think next time the shed over there where we've got the grain uh, would be the best place but um, yes obviously it's in there for today. Right so this tractor is going to be going just here just briefly because uh, what we need to do is get the fence tractor with the baler we need to bring it back to the farm and put it away nicely. We are then going to be using this tractor to muck out the cows I would imagine there is going to be some muck in there by now so we're going to do that very quickly but first let's just tab across to the vent which is here and it is desperate for wash. In fact I should buy a pressure washer but yes we do have this field somewhere in this direction. I don't know exactly where it is but it is going to be en route I would imagine. Uh, actually how do you get to it? I don't think I've ever been to field number 38 ever in one of my let's plays so that is going to have to be discovered for the first time. You might get there through the village or you might have to go from the top road there where the animal dealer is so we will see let's just take a nice leisurely drive through this uh, fairly twisty and narrow road here we are and I think we probably do turn left here which would be amazing because I have never turned left here before in fact I didn't even know it was a way to go maybe it isn't maybe I have still gone wrong but I think we do have to go through the village here to get to field number 38. Okay, uh, where is field number 38? I think it's... It is literally just behind these houses here. But clearly this is not the way to go. This has gone to a load of houses. So they're going to think I am very lost. In fact, I am very lost indeed. Nothing to see here, just a baler, which is actually in the working position getting lost in your village. I am so sorry that residents are going to absolutely love this driving a tractor through. I'm going to have to go on foot because I can't just keep going everywhere with the tractor. We'll put the hazard warning lights on. There we go. Completely blocking the road. It could be up here. If it is up here it's a very tight way to go. But I just can't even begin to imagine where to go uh, if it isn't this way. Okay so it's not this way at all. Interesting. I have bought a field which is completely inaccessible. No, it, it is obviously accessible from a certain direction, but it's much further away than I was expecting. It is the other side of these trees just here. Here it is. Uh, right, so let's try and find a gate. It's a good size field though, very good size. I would imagine we have to come in from the north. I think, yeah, you don't actually come in from the south at all. You have to go through field number 39. Yep, there you go. So you have to get in through, well, a northern access point, I would imagine. Yep, here it is. This is the road to it. Uh, there could be an alternative route. There might be another way further down the field, but this is the place which I've seen. So it is pretty much as far north as you can go to a field which is fairly central uh, on the map. So well, it's not as far north as you can go, but it is, um, it is on this road. It's as far Sort of northwest as you can go. Anyway, let's just head back and we can obviously return to here later when the crop requires some work. It is corn, like I said, unless it has 
miraculously changed. There it is. Should be on the first growth stage, I think. Yep, there we go. And I doubt it's fertilized. No. So it's going to need some fertilizer very soon. In fact, what I do need to do is get a sprayer. We might have a sprayer, but I think for this farm, because there's so much traveling involved, a self-propelled sprayer would be the way to go. So maybe I should look into buying one of those. Anyway, before I go wrong, let's just remember which way we have to go back to the farm. I think it is this turning just here on the right. Just here. It is good. And then, yeah, we'll put the baler away, give the tractor a wash, and hopefully, well, we're obviously mucking out the cows, and hopefully be able to uh, even buy a self-propelled sprayer. We do have quite a bit of money left, but obviously it's not millions, so it's going to be quite tricky still. But we're in a good place, a very good place financially. We own that new field, and we still have quite a bit of money left over. Now, this shed here, which I struggled to get the combine in, would have actually been a better shed for the baler. You can see the head of the trailer is actually sticking out. In fact, it's going to have to be moved. Certainly going to have to be moved. The drill is going to be put away as well. That's going to be attached to the fence with the tracks, the the challenger essentially. Um, let's just get this done. Yep, this is a better shed for the uh, header trailer. Come on, open door. Let me just stand back. Ooh, that's the way to make an entrance. And we'll open that door just there. Come on, open door. It seems I have to headbutt everything for it to work. Uh, anyway, let's just reverse this into there. And then we can, uh, yeah. Get the pressure washer. I don't think we start off with a pressure washer, but I could be wrong. I have been wrong many times before, so there's there's always time um, for me to be wrong again. That should be fine for the bailer. And yes, the uh, the telehandler is in here too. Well, if I was to place a pressure washer, I would say around here would be perfect. So let's just get that put in. First of all, four and a half thousand pounds. We can afford it. It's fine. Yeah, this fence seems to uh, have an interesting dirt system. It doesn't seem to go muddy. It just sort of changes colour. Best that we keep it clean because it is a decent tractor. Just looks a little bit different when it is uh, mucky. That's good. Yes, I'm sure the pressure washer is going to be used quite a bit. Uh, so. Let's just uh, go and move that seed drill because, again, that has just been left out and it does want to be put away. Unless I put it on the fence tractor, like I said before, the other fence tractor. So we do have a sprayer. It's just there. If I was to sell that and replace it with a self-propelled, uh, that would obviously fund it or help fund it. Yeah, the first time I've used this tractor, which I'm desperate to call a Challenger since that is exactly what it is in different colours. But, yes, in the UK we now seem to have Fent instead of Challenger, which makes no no sense to me at all, but I'm sure somebody has a logical explanation for it. Viewers, if you have the reason why, please do let me know, because I have no idea. Do they have more Fent sales in the UK? So they thought, oh, I know, we'll just brand it as a Fent. I have no idea. Uh, personally, I preferred it as a Challenger, but there you go. That's just my personal preference. So... Where can we put the drill? Probably in the same shed. Since it doesn't have any grain in it, we can use it for storing vehicles. Close those three, or close those two. One of which didn't close, I must have missed the trigger. Because it does work, it's just yes. I, Like I said, I have to headbutt it. it, it's just my unique approach to opening doors. Right, we do have the telehandler just there, so that doesn't want to be hit. I have put it in a fairly awkward place, actually. I think we'll just reverse straight in. Uh, yes, that should be fine where it is. And I think I might have explained in a previous video, but chances are this drill will never be detached from this tractor because it is the only tractor that's going to be pulling this, and chances are this will be the only tractor's job. Uh, it's the only thing it will do, just drilling, since there's not going to be a great deal of cultivation. It's just going to be direct drilling, and that pretty much is it. Okay, right, next what we're going to do 
is check and see if there's any manure to muck out. If there is, then great. If there isn't, then obviously we don't have to muck any out. It just basically saves a job. But I think there must be something. We have quite a few cows. And I, I like to be wrong. Although, actually, despite it looking like there's nothing, there could potentially be something. Because sometimes it does look like there is nothing there, but then there is. Nope. No, there is absolutely nothing there. Okay. Uh, come on, cows. Oh, you've got no straw. That would explain everything. Yes, you only get liquid manure if there is no straw. So that's the other thing we have to buy. We have to get a straw blower. So, that changes quite a lot. In fact, if I just put this tractor away in here, then it is ready for when we do have to muck them out. We'll probably have to take the deck off for mucking out as well. But, it means that we can go and sell this sprayer. And we, we do need to buy two different things, so maybe this is another opportunity for the low loader, unless I just find the perfect self-propelled sprayer, meaning it will just drive itself back. I don't know. We'll soon find out. And there is the other silage bale as well, uh, which I think we're just going to keep until we, we do need to do another turtle McTrashion, since I can't see the point in giving them silage when they have turtle McTrashion anyway, which is a much more effective feed. Uh, so yeah, we might as well just keep it for the next mix. And we do need to do some hay making and some hay baling. We have the straw, so that's good. That's step one done. We just need to do the hay and uh, the silage and stuff. Okay, right, well we're almost at the store. Yes, I've also got hay fever, uh, which I usually get really badly. Today's been the first day I've had it, which is much later in the year than normal. Obviously, it's still very early in the year, really, but uh, yeah, usually end of April, beginning of May, I have hay fever, which is always fun. Okay, so I'm just going to position this over here, uh, just in preparation for selling it. Obviously, if I don't find anything suitable, I won't be selling it, but yes, hopefully it is going to be replaced with something quite good. Uh, so yeah, self propelled is going to go for. Let's see what we've got. Uh, crop protection. All oh, the big brutes. I don't think they really fit in with this map though. We've got the horse, Rubicon. Uh, I did have a John Deere. I guess it needs to be enabled. Here it is. It looks like a really nice machine. The R4045 uh, with different wheel brands. Firestone is great. Absolutely love the Firestone. John Deere, you can have it on tracks, uh, which looks interesting to say the least, but I don't think we're going to be going for that, and actually there was a narrow track as well, so you can choose. But yes, I think really uh, I'm going to be sticking with wheels, and I just really prefer the Firestone. Uh, design default or Starfire 3000, well, or 6000. I think I'm going to go for default. I'm so fun. Right, we've got wide and uh, rear jewels. It's like uh, Minnesota Millennial Farmer. Uh, and yes, all the jewels, standard. I think we're going to go for standard. Actually, I could Nah. <laughs> rear jewels. It's very tempting. It does look impressive, I've got to say. However, I, I don't think it's going to go down a UK road. We could always customise it later, but yes, we're going to have to go for the standard. Uh, and of course, this is not the entire sprayer, so... We're going to have to sell the original sprayer first, understandably. These things are not cheap. Uh, so that is £101,000. And the other part of this, it can actually spread fertilizers too with a different attachment. But yes, we need to go for the crop protection, which is the sprayer. And that is a further 18283. Okay, so let's get it set up. It should be. Quite an impressive setup, I would imagine. And um, yes, we're going to be buying the uh, straw shredder as well. I love the Firestone wheels. I don't know why, I just do. I wonder if this is based on uh, one of the FS19 tractors. I think it was actually converted from uh, 17 though, so I doubt it. Just depends if it was remade or not. Now, that must be the... That's got to be the front now, because otherwise it's just going to overhang so much at the back. We're going to have to drive through the centre of the boom, in between the booms, 
And oh, I guess it's going to involve some fairly precision driving here. Nice. It looks good. It is very wide, uh, but then again, it is a sprayer. So I think I'm going to buy the liquid fertilizer from here since we are here already. Uh, so if we just go into the pallet section, we should be able to buy a couple of these, hopefully. That's fertilizer. Yes, didn't want to buy herbicide instead. That would have been a big mistake. Because I really don't need any herbicide. We're, we're not running weeds. And while it's filling up, I will go back into the buy page and buy the straw shredder. I wonder if there's one for the Anderson DLC. There is. Right, well that looks better for my farm, I would say. One IBC fills it up 20%, so that is certainly showing how much it actually will hold. Right, again, as it's filling up, let's just go over here. So we still have £67,000, and we do have nearly all of the equipment which we require. We do need to get, if we don't have one already, a windrower and also a tether. So it isn't everything, but it's close to everything. Yes, and as soon as we have some straw, the cows are going to produce some solid manure, which is going to be very handy for spreading on the land. But of course, we will have to buy a muck spreader in the future, but that is absolutely fine. Okay, well, I think it's going to be a sensible idea for me to drive the sprayer since it is so wide. Uh, or ridiculously wide almost for this UK road. The uh, thing is that they do actually have these in the UK. I know of a farm which has one, so I don't know if it's the exact same model number, but yes, it's definitely not unrealistic for the country. And that is currently set to 70 ahead. I think we can probably get away with 20 or 15. Yeah, 20. Okay. Yes, it is. it is virtually as wide as the entire road. Usually they do narrow, but I think this one might be that wide by default. If we were going to the field first, actually it is that way. Yeah, I'll take the fen tractor back and then we can very quickly come back to the John Deere sprayer and head over to the field. I don't want to take the sprayer all the way back to the yard just to bring it back here again. That would be a complete waste of diesel. It wouldn't take any extra time as such, or I suppose it would do because I have to drive it back as well. It's, yeah, basically just a complete waste of everything. Since this job is going to be for tomorrow, the uh, straw shredding, I think instead of cluttering up the yard, we're going to put this into the shed at the bottom of the yard, which always gets forgotten about by me. I uh, don't know if you forget about it too when you're playing on this map, if you do, uh, but I always overlook it. We do actually own it. It is it is within the, the yard's boundaries, so it just seems ridiculous not to put it to some good use. In fact, it's probably the best barn, looking at it, for the combine. Since it's out of the way, and uh, there's plenty of space in front of it. So, yeah, I think I've really missed a trick there. But next time, I'll put the combine here, along with the header, and then nothing is going to be blocking anything else in, or anything like that. Anyway, we have some spraying to do, let's jump for joy. It is possible to get that excited about spraying. Now this should really boost the, the yield, the productivity of the field. Since it hasn't been sprayed before, since it was actually drilled by, well, I guess you could say it was the Joe Burks and David, since he made the map and uh, it was a, a crop already in. So, yes, it hasn't been fertilised. It really needs to be. Hello, traffic. Nothing to see here. Just a, a monster of a sprayer. But this farm really does have some huge fields. If we were using this machine, even on the biggest field, it's going to feel gigantic. The, the, the field that is not the sprayer. It will be dwarfed by field number 15. Gigantic. Anyway, this is the entrance. Just here. Okay, nice pirouette. We do have 4,000 litres, which should be plenty. Uh, despite it only showing 39% in the tank, that is actually going to equate to a very large area of land. Interesting that it thinks we're in neutral, but yeah, that's fine. It's obviously just not a dynamic screen. Uh, it is growing. It has started to grow. This is good. And I'm hoping it's going to be a really good crop of corn. Because, uh, yeah, I, I really forget how much corn is worth, but I think it's a decent amount. 
It is, because you can see these are bad prices. 1408 is a decreasing price. So in a great demand or, or just a really good price, you know, we should be able to get 1800 maybe? I would hope so. Anyway, here we go, look at that. It can certainly work at a fairly fast speed. Um, but it is applying a, a decent amount, so it will keep the spray rate at 300 litres per hectare. What I'll do is the headland first, and then, yeah, it should get enough covered for me to do this properly. I need to try and get as close to the edge. That's my biggest fault when it comes to spraying. I never get close enough to the edge. Always missing just a piece. Probably a three foot strip, maybe two foot strip. But that's that's good. It's just right. Yeah, it's a decent machine. Looks so good. As I say, I think it was converted from 17, but I don't know the details about it. What I do is I put the credits down below. Okay, and yep, yeah, head back to the beginning. Uh, when we pass go, we can collect 200 pounds. Oh no, wrong game. But that is applying really well. Uh, yes, I, I am already loving this mod. Uh, yes. When, when you get a mod which you love, you just can't stop using it, and also, you can never change it. Yes, one thing I can say very safely is, uh, well, certainly I'm hoping that we're never going to be changing the uh, John Deere sprayer for this map, for this Let's Play. I like it a lot. It is good. Yeah, so we're just filling the gaps. It really shouldn't take too long. I do like the large equipment. It really comes down to which map you're playing on. If it's a really small map, um, or even a really big map with small fields, a big machine like this would just seem absolutely crazy. But with a map like this, it's just perfect. Now I think we are going to have to apply a second application in the future. But, well, clearly, that's not a big problem. It doesn't take us very long to do its job. Yeah, so we should be able to get a lot of money out of this field in the next couple of episodes. Because it's not going to take very long to grow. Really rapid growth. And we have already almost finished. So for that final strip, because we are just going to be covering a very small section, with it being smaller, I will reduce the application rate to probably 200. 200 litres per hectare. And also, I mustn't miss bits. Because that could make all the difference to the uh, profit. Right, okay. So decrease the spray rate, we'll put it to 200. There we go. And yes, we just have this, this very small section just here. And then hopefully, I can just check the map afterwards and it will have all been covered. Also note that this machine does have the uh, Diesel exhaust fluid, or add blue. Done. Okay, let's get it folded up. And if we check the map, you can see it's all been finished. So, um, there's our field number one, which again is at the same stage as 38. They both need to be fertilized again. In fact, field number one is going to have to be fertilized very soon. I was ready to harvest. Okay, we might have missed it then. Field number two has not been replanted by the new owner, but I guess they will do soon. Anyway, look at that. Such a good machine. Uh, my question is though, I wonder, well, why didn't Giants put in uh, one of these as standard? I wish they would have done, but maybe they will do in the future if they have some kind of John Deere DLC. It's always very tricky to get a good thumbnail, but with a good machine like this, it's not very hard. Okay, right, so uh, if there is no alternative route back to the farm, which I don't think there is, we are just going to have to travel back this way. If we own this field here, there could be a route. That might go somewhere. But where would he go to? Exactly. <laughs> I have no idea. So I think it's probably just safer if I do go the long way around. But yeah, it could do. It could end up close to the farm. 
I might be doing this for nothing. But it's not my land, so I can't really just go driving through there. It also has no shortage of beacons, which makes it look very snazzy. Like I say, I would just like to buy that farm just here, eventually. But currently, we, we don't really have the money to put into the fields. But soon, we will do. Well, here we are. This might have to be another machine, which stays down at the bottom end of the farm. Uh, not really because of the space, uh, but not really because of the size of the yard, because it is going to be able to fit through there. It's just because of uh, you know, blocking other machines in, which I really do not want to do. Uh, so, yes, in the future, in the next episode most likely, we do have field number three, which hasn't been cut before. That is a grass field, and that is exactly where we're going to be getting the, the grass from for the hay, uh, which will obviously be given to the sheep and to the cows. Okay, so there we go. And in fact, that is going to conclude this episode. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.